obnoxious, like an um, audio blowout. Yeah, it's just the blare, it's like, it's like, da, 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 da. <laughs> not like, oh, we gotta play it. As long as you don't make it sound right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so I'll clap. So, Carl, I can't see you. I wonder why that is. I'm gonna make that, that John Cena theme so fucking loud, <laughs> you won't believe. Do you know that meme people take from Glee? Mm -hmm. Of just like, um, uh, it's like uh, Jane Lynch talking about, I am going to create an environment that's so hostile. It's like, I'm going to create a John Cena clip that is so fucking obnoxious, you won't believe. <laughs> John Cena is a curious individual in that despite being wider than a car door and spending the majority of his time um, in the public eye, um, drop kicking large fridge shaped men and occasionally Megatron, a good number of people on the internet will earnestly claim not to be able to see him. Something that is the direct result of a bet John Cena made with his own brother many, many years ago, which has cursed him to become an ethereal ghost wrestler man who nobody can see. So Nisha, how much do you know about some John Cena and how he became just wrestling Hollow Man? Um, well, because like Adam's really into wrestling, so I <laughs> see it on occasion, and um, I don't know much about him personally. I just know he's like been wrestling for years, mm -hmm. and he's. I don't know. I don't know when he started. It was like in the nineties or something like that. Yeah, he's been wrestling think. a long it's time. A lot, it's been a long time. He's had a lot of gimmicks in that time. Like mm. his first gimmick, according to him, is he wrestled as a robot. And he told people he was like a Terminator style robot. And his whole thing is that he like tells someone he's gonna kick their ass and then do like the Jim Carrey rewind like, uh, 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 oh, yeah. and say it backwards and then do it again. How did you demonstrate you were a machine? Well, I, I used this ability to talk rather monotone and would say things authoritative. And just when I said I would kick your ass at the fairgrounds on Sunday, I would rewind it and say it again for you. Why is the only thing they say I would kick your ass at the fairgrounds? <laughs> And there's a great interview with him and Matthew McConaughey because Matthew McConaughey is like super into wrestling. When John Cena tells people that like, he's not real, Matthew McConaughey, no, 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 it's real, right? You were a robot, right? <laughs> so I like, try to defend the honor of wrestling. You can describe your character. But these are not gimmicks. These, this is real. Well, well. I mean, if they work. But he's now going to be best known for his stint in the WWE, where he started as like. <laughs> White, the white rapper character, which I think is the oh best era of John Cena. Yeah, because he had that old theme theme song that's like Word Life. Yeah. Like well, I think actually knocking about somewhere in my DVD collection, I've got John Cena's Word Life, which is his spoken word album, which include all of his self penned raps <laughs> when he was billing himself as just the professor of thugonomics. Oh my with God, a minor yes. in thugonometry. Yes, that, that word thugonomics. <laughs> but that's the thing, yeah, because I obviously styled himself initially as like, you know, a white rapper character, like, you know, the big chains and the silly, which I think is the best era of John Cena personally. And then he went on to be like, you know, more Marine inspired, where he was like militaristic. Yeah. And then it moved on to like, you know, the hustle, loyalty, respect thing when they realised he was popular with kids. But one thing that's been ever present throughout John Cena's career is his like remarkable and commendable work ethic and his talent for just ruthless self-promotion. And Brad, we've talked about this before, haven't we? Um, do you remember the whole thing about John Cena like hustling to get people to buy his t-shirts? I actually don't. Okay, so a couple of years <laughs> ago. Full of input there, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought you might remember, well, I'm wearing a John Cena shirt right now, and he's had many bits of merch over the years. And um, one of the bits of merch that ended up being so controversial they couldn't sell it is a t-shirt that said on it, Rook Fools. So R U C K F U L E S. Oh, right, yeah. Okay, yeah. And whenever he wore a shirt or hat with that logo on it, when he was on TV, it would be immediately and obnoxiously censored. And he would tell people, "Oh, it's just it's a message. The man doesn't want you to see." And the WWE played into that. And it turns out, no one gave a shit. The WWE <laughs> didn't care. Now there's censors on TV, but people at home thought they did and would buy that T-shirt in droves. And that's just like you know one small example of the kind of thing. John Cena would do to like, you know, promote his own brand. I don't know why I keep thinking of um, one of the action figures I saw. This is recent as well. Mm -hmm. In Morrison's, they sort of like the toy aisle. Of course they do, yeah. There's the, uh, the wrestling action figures. And there was one of John Cena who was wearing a t-shirt and it said, you can't stop me. <laughs> like, oh, that'd, be no. a great, that'd be a great remix on his thing. Wouldn't it? Just, like, you can't stop me. Cause you think, oh, that's what you'd get from a, a knockoff. Yeah. Toy, but it was in Morrison's like actual wrestling. Like, if it was a knockoff, it'd be like impossible to perceive or something like that, <laughs> wouldn't it? Like you just run it through um, uh, Google Translate. 
like un- unable to uh, <laughs> view, <laughs> visualize. <laughs> One of the things I actually kind of like about wrestling figures is their commitment to try and realise the likeness of the wrestler they're portraying. Do you ever hear the story about the wrestler Sheamus? I know who it is because we we, we we watched it on um, it was a Royal Rumble. I can't even see. WrestleMania. That's it. Yeah, well, we watched it on Saturday WrestleMania, and mm-hmm. he was on that, and it's the he's really pale, isn't yes. he? He's so pale. Yeah, he's so pale, and there's like an iconic meme image of him like doing his um like. Intro, it's the lights are so bright, he just looks like you've not unlocked him yet. <laughs> and it's a personal point of pride for him that they had to invent a new kind of paint for his wrestling figure because when they were going through all the different, like, you no know, paints they had for skin tone, they didn't have his. Because when he went in for like the photos that they used for reference to create his um, action figure, they literally did not have a paint pale enough to accurately represent his skin. That's to make a new one. Oh That's to make a new paint because oh they didn't think humans could be that shade. He is, he is so white. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't stop staring. I'm like, God, especially compared to like other wrestlers in the ring as well. Because obviously, like, they're all tanned and you know, oiled, yeah, and to oblivion, yeah. And he just it just stands out. Oh, they even they've even replicated that pastiness in the doll. Well, they actually they actually went out of their way to create a new skin tone just for my uh, action figure. It's an action figure, <laughs> by the way, Ryan, Sorry. not a doll. But to bring it back to John Cena, as I mentioned, like you know, the the Rook Falls thing for a while, and that's been a a hallmark of his career, where he's had a lot of close to the knuckle elements of his um, uh, wrestling facade that I've seen him become quite popular with fans. And are you aware of any of the names of his moves? Because that's one of the ways um, in which I he does I should this. be. I should know this. We can go, you know, the first one. The, it's, it's, it's iconic, the, the five knuckle shuffle, which in addition uh, to being a finishing move from John Cena is a finishing move you can do on your own at home. Like Google it if you don't like know what I'm talking about. <laughs> he also has the FU and the, like, the STF, um, which, you know, they mean something to wrestling fans, but to a lot of people, they are euphemisms for fuck you and shut the fuck up, respectively. Now, the, just, a lot of these moves where you're just jumping from the uh, the ropes. I know a lot of like moves are just yeah. people just flying onto people on the floor. Yeah, and do you have like a favourite finishing move in wrestling? And why ever think? <laughs> well, like, there's the classics, isn't there? I like the choke slam. I've always liked the choke slam because it's just that thing that like, it's so huge and buff and strong. Like, rah, boom, or like power bomb. Or the jackknife powerbomb, which is like, oh, just go do this to your brother and kill him. Like, you know, the, the, bro- the, the sibling annihilator, well, as it should be known. There's always the ones where it always looks really, really painful when they miss, when they mm-hmm. roll out of the way, when they're just using the elbow. Oh, yeah. That, that looks so painful. Yeah. And the, I, the thing as well with wrestling, like we've talked before in the past, haven't we, Brad? Like, they need to start making it less realistic because the emphasis on just, like, wrestlers performing under, like, you know, their own name. Like, John Cena, people don't know that's his actual name. Like just John Cena's real name is John Cena, and he hates that because he said, "We've always got to make up, and I want to be called Dick Hammerbush." Like, hey man, how'd you make up the name John Cena? I was like, "No, dude, I would have made up like Dick Hammerbush or something cool like that." <laughs> Not Dick Hammerbush or something. I don't know. That's a star. Then the trend in recent years has been towards realism, and. I miss that, and I want to go back to the days of characters like Gold Dust, where he's just Darth Maul in the ring, or Kane, where they build him as like an actual like zombie who just come in and kick the fuck out of people. I do find it funny that his name is John Cena, which is one mispronunciation away from John Connor, and he was used to be like a Terminator character. Mm-hmm. Well, that's probably one of the reasons that inspired it, maybe. Is it, is his name also? The um, reason why his catchphrase, catchphrase is you can't see me because it's like John Cena. It's, it might be, like, you know, that might be part of it anyway. But, um, Stop laughing at me. <laughs> well, the story behind that is kind of hilarious because, as mentioned, like, you know, we had the, the rapper character for a while and he wrote all his own theme music. Uh, you know, when he was. Uh, he did, he wrote, that's it, he wrote his own theme music. <laughs> he did, he did. And one of the things that he said he did. <laughs> And one of the things that he said he would do is get his brother to sit in on the um, uh, the preview process. And he said if his brother didn't like it, he wouldn't use it because his brother was really harsh. You don't think that siblings do of like, it's shit. Mm-hmm. They'll, they'll just be straight up with you. And he said whenever he was like, you know, testing out new music, he'd always let his brother listen to it. And he says, and the story as John Cena tells it is, when like he was letting him listen to like, you know, the John Cena theme song, which we all know. But to be that, I don't know how many people actually know it and how many people just listen to the first five seconds and click off the video. <laughs> we said his brother was just doing this. of like, mm, mm, mm. He's like, what are you doing? You're like, I don't know, he's how you dance. Oh my God. <laughs> 
And I'm like, dude, what are you doing? He's like, no, everybody does this, man. Everybody does this. And he's like, no, he's not. And he's like, mm, yeah, yeah, I'm just grooving along with this song. I'm like, the fuck is that? And apparently it was like something a rapper did in a music video that his brother was copying. Oh, you mad? I thought that you'd be happy I made it. I'm the cat by the bar to I'm the cat by the bar to And John seems like, that's so dumb. And his brother went, I dare you. Dare you to do it on TV? Well, I'll do it on TV. I will do. It, I'll do you one better. I'll make it look even stupider. I'll do this. <laughs> I'll go on stage and I'll do it, and that's what he did. Before he, like he said, I'm going to debut my new finishing move, the five knuckle shuffle. Before I do it, I'm going to do this. <laughs> anyway, he went on stage and he did it. And while he was doing, he was like, "You can't see me." And do you know why he actually says you can't see me? What, what his original intention behind it was? I don't know, his, his, his hand is so fast you can't see his face, I don't know. That's a, that's a bit literal, which is what the internet took it to me, but, like, but to paraphrase John Cena himself, it was supposed to be a reference to the fact, you know, I'm so I'm so beyond your level, you can't even see me. You know, he was a rapper character at the time, like, yeah, I'm so fluid and dynamic like my rhymes, you can't even get on my level, you can't see me. Well, the internet being the internet took it literally and just took it to mean that John Cena literally turns invisible when he does that. <laughs> which is where we have to talk about something in wrestling known as kayfabe. And are you familiar at all with the concept of kayfabe and how important it is to the world of wrestling? I, I hear it said a lot just in general conversation. You say it a lot, yeah. Brad. Mm -hmm. But is it just like, I don't you, you can't Go on, Brad. the meaning, go on, Brad. <laughs> uh, so kayfabe, as I understand it, is that, yeah, particularly in wrestling, there's this idea that there is this fictional version of events and mm -hmm. things that happen. It's not fictional, and, it's real. Yeah, so um, you have to act like everything that is happening is genuinely happening or is genuinely real Yes. for the sport to have like the real impact that it's supposed to have. Yeah. And if you break kayfabe, you are basically breaking the unspoken rule of saying it's not real. Yeah, it's the cardinal sin of wrestling is to break kayfabe. And what the wrestlers were doing while they were in the building, in the ring. And when they stepped out of the building. At no point in time did the wrestlers ever insult the audience or disrespect the audience by, hey, you're wrestling him tonight and the two of you show up in the same car. And there's probably some people at home who aren't fans of wrestling, like that's stupid. And they're the worst kind of people to watch wrestling. You know it's not real. And to those people, imagine how annoying it'd be when you're watching, like, I don't know, The Mandalorian. If like every, when you're getting into it, and like, wow, what's gonna happen next episode? Is Baby Yoda okay? It's not real. It's like, oh, if you went to a play, like getting really into it, like the actor's really good. You know it's not real, right? On the cinema of like, well, oh, wonder what happens in the next movie. Well, you know it's not real. Did you know the movie was fake before he went in there? Did you know that Spider-Man is not a documentary about a young man shooting jizz out of his wrist? It's just another form of entertainment where you're expected to suspend your disbelief just a few moments to enjoy yourself. So I don't um, have to stay in character, even like not on TV, like in, on like Instagram and stuff like that. Because I know there was do, yes. one like it was Alexa Bliss, I think, was possessed or something, mm -hmm. and she was not. I don't know if the exact details, but it was something like she wasn't on Instagram because she was possessed. Yeah. And she wasn't herself. I think there was another wrestler that was supposedly dead that was communing through her. Oh, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. That's the kind of thing that happens in wrestling, and it's not so much a big deal now, like the age of the internet has like ruined the idea of kayfabe. Like, and as I said, there'll be people in the comments of this video like, well, it's not real, it's not real, it's like, we know it's not real. And that's the thing, like, yes, we know it's not real, but we still want to pretend that it is. But you know, it adds to the theater of the sport. You know, it adds to the storylines. And, and as you mentioned, Brad, breaking kayfabe is a big no-no. And you know, it's probably not as big a deal as it was back in the day. Cause like, there were so many stories from back in the day of like wrestlers, like getting arrested or in like big, big trouble. For refusing to break character. Like, there's stories of like wrestlers, because they travel to shows on their own, but sometimes wrestlers will be traveling to shows with people they're supposedly uh, in a feud with. And like, they'd have, you know, when they get pulled over by the police, they have to start fist fights and stuff. Because, you know, it is, they don't like each other, so they'd have to start fist fights. So I was like, uh, one set of wrestlers, I think they didn't speak, and they got arrested because they refused to give their name when stopped by the police because they were in character and they didn't want to break character. And there are countless examples of wrestlers showing a frankly heroic amount of dedication to their craft and refusing to break character or kayfabe. And the, I think the most visual example of that is when wrestlers stay in character through actual genuine injuries. And I think the most famous example of that is when Triple H, like I think he quad tore off his bone in a match that he was supposed to win. He was supposed to win the match, but his like, you know, his muscle 
goal at that point was to finish the match, to continue doing what we were doing and just uh, to, uh, to get through it. Um, Walter Jericho felt like uh, the longest thing I've ever done in my life. I remember him putting me in it, and as I was turning over in it, thinking, this is going to be brutal. <laughs> now, if you look at the match, um, back the second that match is over, I'm on the floor just holding on to my leg. It was, and it took every bit of uh, what I had in me to make it through the end of the match, and once I did, it was, I was done. Why did I continue the match? It's, I guess, passion for what I do, uh, I, I love of the business to me. It's, it's um, you know, the, the show goes on, right? And uh, that's just what I did. Just that level of dedication is like almost alien to me because like, I've called in sick when I was like, <coughs> this is how you wake up and you go, <coughs> well, that's it, week off. <laughs> like, literally, it's a week off. It's like, that's it, done. Week off. Um, I just find it funny when you get people who play like the heels, the villains, mm -hmm. um, addicts to like kids. They've got to be, yeah, that's it. you've got to stay in character. And like, you know, there are examples of that, of like, you know, wrestlers. <laughs> have got to stay in character as villains and like you know kids will stop and and they have to be mean to the kids because to do otherwise would like you know ruin the illusion and that's and that to me is why just being the villain's always cooler because not only do you get to be the character everyone loves you also don't have to talk to anyone <laughs> <laughs> things like the undertaker because he's got to stay in character doesn't have to sign autographs i'd, I'd definitely be a villain <laughs> everyone always loves the villain but to bring it back to john cena being invisible um, because fans of wrestling took that you can't see me to mean that John Cena turns invisible because of kayfabe that means that when John Cena does that move he for all intents and purposes becomes invisible to the audience and the other people in the ring and because as again kayfabe doesn't stop even when the match ends like John Cena is invisible in real life <laughs> And to his credit, he does lean into it. So have you seen like those clips of people walking past John Cena and he just stands still? <laughs> so people don't see him. I don't know, I'm just imagining him like waving to someone, like waving, and he's like right, waving in front of his face to someone and they just walk past him because they can't see him. Mm -hmm. And he has said in, and he has talked in the past about people walking to him as a joke and say, oh, oh sorry, I didn't see you there. And because of kayfabe, he has to be like, yeah, I get it. And I imagine in that situation, the age of the person is inversely proportional to how much you have to grit your teeth now. So a little kid doing it, that's kind of cool. That's kind of neat is that the kid understands the idea of wrestling that you can't see John Cena. But I'm guessing there's a lot of adults who try and do that to John Cena to be funny. And the has got to stand there and like, ha it's a good one. No, I that. could break you in <laughs> fucking two. I've not heard that before. It's original. It should change his um, theme song to the one from Peacekeeper. <laughs> Start dancing down. No, he comes down the ramp and he just like starts doing the dance moves to that instead. Would you see you did a bunch of interviews like in character as Peacekeeper? Like, he'd, he'd turn up in the outfit and then ask him oh. like, are you allowed to do that? I was like, I don't know. Well, no one stopped me. He's used to stop, um, he's used to staying in character so that's probably just a habit. Yeah, but it's like that's one of the things I love about like the world of wrestling and just I felt like I needed to address that thing there of like, well it's not real, it's like well all entertainment is fake, it's just that wrestling's more upfront about it and it's like just a Kayfabe is an agreement of sorts between the performer and the people watching at home to suspend their disbelief for a few moments so everything's more fun. Just that thing about people walking into John Cena and making a joke about it. If wrestling fans are that dedicated, just think of the gimmicks you could get. Like, what if your gimmick was every time someone went near there, I had to give you a dollar? I think about, you know, his gimmick is like, you know, hustle, loyalty, respect. But don't forget that Eddie Guerrero's gimmick was like, she steal. <laughs> Song. But my gimmick is that whenever anybody gets within 10 feet of me, they immediately find me attractive and want to be with me. <laughs> That's the thing that we, you did have that. Apparently, like, there were stories like Eddie Guerrero would just nick things off fans, and they'd be like, oh, he's in character. He's just in character as, like, you know, the fucking the bad boy of wrestling. He just steal people's shit. Great. What was your gimmick be? Um. <laughs> Nobody talks to me. Leave me alone. Just say you got John Cena's gimmick. I'm in this box. Can't see me. Um, I was, I was just thinking a cat related one. Just give me a cat. I have to show you a bit of the cat. Show me pictures of your cat. Well, one thing I want to do check is, do I have his spoken word album down here? Oh I have God. it. Where is it? Oh, look. Actually, no, I think it's in the other room. One oh, sec. It's gone invisible again. Yeah, go on, riff for a minute. I can still talk, people better hear me. still there, though, can't you? Yeah, people it's just think, there. you know what? No, I've got a better idea. Watch this. Watch this. Before I go off camera, I'm just going to do this. Watch. I'm just gonna go, yeah, so I'm going to go off camera and find it. There you go. You should fade it. You go like that. Yeah, just, dis disappear. just see you later, fuckers.
that'd be a good edit. That'd be a fun edit. Got it somewhere, I know I do. Send us that edit, we'll, we'll fade it out. <laughs> Where is it? So Carl's in the other room, just going through a box. Yeah. And uh, we don't know how long he's going to be. And we can only record for a certain amount of time on this camera. So if this video just ends here, then... No, no, it looks like... No, no, I can't find it. He might be down here. <laughs> oh, no, okay, well, he's, he's, he's still looking. I, I swear, down, I've got his album. Yeah, we... You uh, can't see it, Carl. I can't. <laughs> it's invisible. It's, his, his album's just disappeared. Yeah, so if this if this cuts off here, it's because we ran out of time, because it was more important to him to show the album. Shut just up! To talk about it. I will whack you in the head. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually have it. <laughs> just hold your hand just up like that. Is, is, are you editing skills there, yeah, Carl? Could you do no. it? No. Deposit it in. I, I forgot about all the dumb shit I do own though. Like why why do I have a copy? Fucking Gremlins two. I ain't got Gremlins one. Oh, yeah, it's too. Too. Oh. Got the Power Rangers movie down here. I guess I'll make Wait a minute, maybe it's in the other room, one sec. Oh, my God. It, might be, it might be in the other other room. I guess I'll make myself useful. Uh, check out the Fat Fee merch store. <laughs> Got five and a half minutes. Five and a half minutes. Let's see if you can find it. No, I don't know where it is. <laughs> oh, fuck! So you've committed enough time, you've got to keep looking. No, because it'll be in the um, uh, be in storage, if it's not in there. Unless it's in here. No. I mean, Carl, you know what You know what John Cena would say? Never give up. <laughs> Don't give up! <laughs> What's like dumb shit? Why own this? Why have I got the Mario Bros movie on VHS? What? <laughs> well, is it the original one? No, uh, the TV show, remember that shit? Remember the TV show? Never raised my hands. So. <laughs> um. Your favourite wrestler is. Go. It's fine. Right, cheers everyone. <laughs> we try. Oh yeah. Um, I'm hosting a Mortal Kombat 11 tournament. You can find out about it in the links below. Fuck, I forgot to do it! I've got five minutes. I'm gonna disappoint John Cena by not self promoting like an absolute madman. Yeah, I did have it. I had his like uh, spoken word album. Oh, I did. Disappeared. It's obviously just invisible. Why have I so much dumb stuff in my house? That's what you collect. Oh yeah, I do, no. <laughs> you want talking points. That's the whole point. So tell us about this Mortal Kombat tournament. Ah, the information's linked below. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Done. There we go. Oh, no, I can't find that now.